Welcome. Are you so excited to be factoring? I bet you are. It's like Christmas, basically. Okay, so I'm going to be pretty detailed in this video. If you just wanted a really quick overview, I will link a video over there. I will also link a playlist of all the factoring videos your heart could desire. Um, in this video, I will be detailed, but I am assuming you have a bit of a factoring background. So if that is not the case, that's okay. Um, hang with me on this video for a couple minutes. If you're like, what the crap is she talking about? Go check out that playlist um, to kind of get a little bit of a foundation. But let let get started. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay. Um, first thing I want to do. Okay. Well, first of all, what am I even doing? We are factoring. Okay. So I want to know this is going to end up being three sets of parentheses multiplied together to get me this answer. Okay. Just like uh, two times three. Can you see that? Yes. Two times three equals six, right? We want to figure out what multiplies together to get this. Not quite as simple as two times three, but we can find it. So you may have been factoring smaller things like maybe like this. Um, but now we've got a cubed. It just looks a little scarier, but don't worry, you can do it. So what we want to do here is the first thing you do is you always want to check and see if there's anything that can be pulled out from everything from the beginning. Um, there's nothing here that can be pulled out of everything. So we are going to factor by grouping. Okay. So what we do is we're going to first look at these first two terms and we're going to see if we can pull anything out. So looking at these, I noticed that I can pull an X squared from both of them. Okay. So if I pull an X squared out, what I'm going to be left with inside is X plus four. Okay. This is where if you're like, what in heaven's name did she just do? Go, go check out some of those other factoring videos and then come back to me, please. So we pulled out that X squared. If I multiply this X squared back in, I should get X cubed plus four X squared. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with this side. Okay. So what can I pull out from both of those? Well, I know that negative nine goes into both of those. So I'm going to pull out a negative nine. Okay. If I pull out a negative nine, I'm going to be left in the parentheses with X plus four. Okay. This is going beautifully because what do you notice? These are the same. Okay, so now I am going to pull out the X plus four to what I might call the outside. Okay, so we're now pulling the X plus four out, factoring that out. And then what we have left is the X squared minus nine. Now it might look like, uh, how did you just get rid of an X plus four? Well, they're both really still there. Okay. It's kind of like if, if I had two times three plus three times three and I pull that three on the outside. So I'm left with three times two plus three. When I distribute that in, there's still two threes. Does that make sense? So I didn't really get rid of one of them. We just wrote it in a different way that makes it so you only have to write it once. Okay. All right. Now, are we done? Not quite. We're close though. This X squared minus nine can be factored down further. Okay. So I happen to notice that X squared minus nine is what we call a difference of two squares. Okay. If you don't notice that, go ahead and factor it like normal. Okay. But I noticed it's a difference of two squares. I'll link a video right over here if you need a review on this. But basically, um, I noticed that this is this could be written as x squared minus three squared. Okay. And then I can apply this beauty. Okay. So basically what ends up happening is I have x plus four. And this x squared minus nine factors to x plus three times X minus three. Okay. Guess what? I'm done. That is my answer. So just like two times three equals six, this times this times this 
equals this. And you could always go back and multiply this to make sure you got it right. Math is beautiful because there's usually a way to check yourself. Okay, now let's check out this one. This one is different in that there's a number in front of our x cubed, right? Where there wasn't one over here. So we can still do it though. You're doing the same thing. Um, first thing I notice is if I can pull anything out to begin with. Well, I notice all these numbers are divisible by three. Okay, so I'm going to pull a three out. So if I pull a three out, inside the parentheses, I'm going to be left with x cubed plus five x squared minus x minus five. Okay, if I were to multiply that three back in using the distributive property, I would get this, okay? So, we are one step closer, okay? Now, I'm going to take this inside part and apply what I did over here, okay? Factoring by grouping. Now, I like to like circle this number out here because we can ignore it for a second, but we cannot forget to put it as part of our answer, okay? So I'm like, flashlight, fireworks, don't forget that three in the end, but I'm gonna forget it for a second, okay? So we're just focused on what's in here for a minute, okay? So first I'm going to look at these two terms. So what can I pull out? Um, I can pull out an x squared, okay? If I pull out that x squared, inside the parentheses I'm left with x plus five, okay? Now I'm doing the same thing with this side, okay? Now, if you are still kind of new to factoring, this might look like um, I can't pull anything out, right? It's a negative X and a negative five. Like I can't pull anything out, but there is something you can pull out. You can pull out a negative one, okay? If that just like blew your mind, it's okay. As you factor more, um, it'll become more obvious to you, okay? So watch what happens if I pull out a negative one, okay? If I pull out a negative one, what's left inside is X, plus five. Why is that? Because if I multiply this back in, I get negative X minus five. Okay. Now the reason I want to plot that negative one is because look, dun, 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 they match. That's what we were going for. Okay. So now just like over here, I can pull out that X plus five. So I'm going to have X plus five. And what was left is x squared minus one, okay? This is another difference of two squares, this x squared minus one, okay? It may ne not necessarily always be a difference of two squares, um, but just factor it down further if you can by whatever means you need to use, okay? So in this case, it is a difference of two squares. So this is still gonna be x plus five. That's factored as far as it can go. This is going to be x plus 1 times x minus 1, okay? If I were to multiply those back together, foil them, I would get that, okay? So, oh my gosh, that's as far down as it can go. Only thing I cannot forget is that this 3 is on the outside, right? We need to remember it. So now, that is my answer. Oh my gosh. Again, you can always multiply it all out. Make sure you get this, okay? All right, hopefully that made sense. And, oh, quick note, I was gonna say, if you're doing one of these and when you factor by grouping, the parentheses don't match. Ugh. Okay, if they don't, take a look at the problem, see if there's a different way to um, maybe group them, factor them. Um, if not, depending on what your teacher wants. Um, you can ask if they want you to do the rational zero theorem. That would be kind of rude. So hopefully they just say, oh, just put, no. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but if this way doesn't work, there are other ways, but I'm hoping the level you're at right now, they should all work this way. Okay, get your homework done, go to bed, have dreams about that are nightmares.